What are some true scary experiences that you Redditors have been through? Subzer Zero Fun Twelve year ago When I was about twelve, I had a lot of issues with night terrors, and rarely slept a whole night through. One night, I got up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. I sat down, half asleep, and thinking of nothing but emptying my bladder and going back to bed when I see movement out of the corner of my eye. A man was standing by the other door to the bathroom staring at me, not moving. He was wearing a tattered grey jumpsuit and had a crutch, little to no hair. I don't remember how I got down into the basement where my parents slept but suddenly there I was, hysterical. My dad finally went up and looked in the bathroom and kitchen. Saw nothing but allowed me to sleep on the couch down there anyway. I didn't fall back asleep. About an hour or so later, I heard the sliding door to the bathroom from my sister's room and limping footsteps. The next morning my dad searched around and noticed that the fridge and pantry had been raided. Never caught the guy. Skelly 6. 12 year ago. I was driving home through back roads I had never been on and came across a bookstore in a tiny town in the woods. The bookstore was a house, where the front of the home had been converted into a store. There was a box on the porch that said .50 books, so I stopped to see if there were any Stephen King books in there. A middle-aged woman comes out with a huge smile and gives me a bowl of fruit and some tea. I'm like, this place is awesome and rifle through books while eating the fruit and downing the tea. Inside the store slash home, there were a lot of cool art books, so I spent some more time there. She brought me more tea. Even when I said, no thank you, that's plenty, she kept refilling. Gave me dessert too, brownies and cookies. I didn't realize it at the time, but she was drugging me. It's hazy to remember the details, but at some point, she closed the shop, telling me to take my time looking at the books. She told me that she was going to go take a shower and was gone for a while. When I was ready to pay, I had to wander back through her house to find her. I found her in her bedroom. She was in bed. I'm pretty sure she was naked. At the time, I thought weird, she's watching an exercise video in bed, but later realized she was watching porn. You might think this is hot, but it isn't. She was my mom's age and had been telling me how she reminded me of her kids in college. So. Not hot. I told her I was ready to pay, and she told me how to open the register, so I went and opened it, put in what I thought I owed, took out the change, and left. When I stumbled outside, a fire engine drove by, screaming with sirens. In the distance was the glow of a big forest fire, and the stars were being covered by smoke. A tall man on a horse watched the fire truck pass. He looked right at me, took a piece of wood or something out of his mouth, and said, Town's burning. I swear to God I have a crystal clear memory of this happening, even though I'm sure it couldn't have. By this point, I guess I was seriously tripping balls on something. I'm not a drug guy so I don't know what I had, but I was out of my mind and could hardly walk. I got back in my car and drove, home along twisting roads on tall cliffs above the ocean. Twice I realized I was on the wrong side of the road. One of the times I realized this because a massive truck was headed straight for me, laying on the horn and flashing its lights. I kept thinking about how my car could be like an airplane and a submarine if I drove it off the cliff. I can't believe I made it home alive. Later I realized I was in that house for about 4 hours looking at books. At least that's what I hoped to hell I was doing. <laughs> Miss Melanie 87. 12 year ago. When I was about 6 years old I went to the CD carnival that was set up in a mall parking lot with my dad and my grandma. We were waiting in line for the infamous pirate ship ride. My dad got off the line to get us drinks. Maybe about five minutes later a man grabs my hand and says come on. This line's too long and starts leading me away. I remember my grandma yelling after me Mel. That's not your father. I looked up and saw this man wearing matching a matching pair of faded denim jacket and jeans, 
cheap NASCAR sunglasses, and a firefighter's mustache. When he saw that my grandma was screaming he let go of my hand and vanished into the crowd. We told these cops that were standing by their cars, and they said they couldn't do anything. It bothered me for a very long time. Ninja Baby Jesus Twelve year ago. I was in India for work, staying at a fairly nice hotel. I don't do this often, I usually like to head straight to the room and order room service while watching a movie, but I decided to have a drink at the lobby bar. I had a drink on my own, there was no one else around in the bar and I made small talk with the bartender. I ordered another drink and decided to use the bathroom. I was gone a couple of minutes and when I got back I noticed that my drink, scotch and dry, had a cloudy white rim at the top which isn't normally there. On closer inspection, the cloudy froth was settling into a powdery residue on the side of the glass. I asked the bartender what was wrong with the drink and he at first acted like he didn't notice anything. I was suspicious now and kept at it until he acknowledged he saw something, I mean, it was obvious, there was this froth 2 to 3 millimeters around the glass. Then he said that it always happens and it's nothing. I then looked him directly in his eyes and asked, did he put anything in my drink? It's hard to explain, but his response, though it was no, told me everything I needed to know. So, I made out like I was more curious than anything, and asked him whether he would taste it. He said no and said he would pour me another. I declined and said I would drink it, but I just wanted him to tell me if it was off or not. All this while, there was this awkward vibe where we both knew the jig was up but we were pretending like this wasn't happening. I paid up and left the drink where it was, locked, and latched my door, the whole time picturing myself lying in a bath of ice, sans organs. James Duggan. Twelve year ago. It was a dark and stormy night. I was spending the summer in FL, with an aunt and uncle. I left with my uncle to go get dinner and bring it home, and when we got back, the house was strangely quiet, their three yo son quiet in his crib. Searched the house but could not find my aunt. Then we saw the 200 pounds glass sliding patio door slash storm panel was missing. It had been flung out onto the patio and my aunt was under it. We freaked, it took both of us to lift it off her. She was convulsing, froth running down her face. I called 911, uncle held her head. We figured it out over the next few hours slash days. And had been closing the patio door, reached up to turn off the light switch, and the house and she both were struck by lightning. Went in her hand and out her nose, later we found all her nose hairs were burnt. She had somehow been flung outside with the sliding door. She survived and had electrical tremors and symptoms for about two years. Pain God 12 year ago. I used to work graveyards at Circle K in a northern CA college town. CA law states that no alcohol can be sold between 2 to 6 a.m. At about 2.45 a.m., a couple of guys come into the store, and go to the cooler to grab a couple of 18 packs of shit beer, Coors, Keystone, can't remember now. I tell the leader of the duo that it's after 2, and I can't sell the beer to him. As he starts getting irate, I offer him a free coffee, soda, and candy bar, but I can't sell the beer. Cops and management had been all over our asses for questionable sales. The leader gets the 1,000-yard stare in his eyes and proceeds to start reaching for the small of his back, at which point his friend says, Stop, man. It's not worth it. The leader smiled at me and winked and said, See you soon. And left. Two days later I got fired for telling the regional dickhead that two people needed to be on at night, and a few other things, so my assistant manager had to cover my shift. That night he was robbed and had the shit knocked out of him by a guy that fit the description of the tool I dealt with a few nights before. When I was a kid I was staying up at some family friend's hobby farm. Me and their boy Sean, we were both around 11 or 12, got up and I gave him a hand doing his chores on the farm. 
As we walked up to the barn we hear a big commotion in the chicken coop. As we walked up to the coop I noticed motion in the chicken wire 2x6 window. I and Sean are standing 15 feet away from the coop window. I verified with Sean later that we both saw a man appear on the right side of the window. As he floated, or possibly rollerblade, by the window he slowly looked over at us, and as if finding us wanting to be turned away and continued out of sight. I will never forget the look on that face. It was the face of an old man who was bloated and severely ill. Unfortunately, it was a face that seemed very familiar. Both I and Sean thought it was his father. His father at the time was a healthy and fit 45 year old, but we were both left with the impression that we had seen his father. Anyways, we rush up to the coop to see what's going on. Nothing there except agitated chickens doing their thing. I and Sean talked about it for the rest of the day and could make no sense of it. His dad had been gone running errands since 5 a.m. and didn't return until later that afternoon. I and Sean never talked about it after that day. In hindsight, I can see it became taboo. I fell out of touch with Sean as I got older until I got a call from my parents to let me know that Sean's dad had passed away from cancer and gave me info on his service. The service was at the old hobby farm. Being there brought back a lot of memories but I'm sure I wasn't thinking about me and Sean's spooky incident. My brain had filed that under miscellaneous long ago and forgot about it. Right up until I saw a certain picture in a collection of images from Sean's father's life. The picture that caught my eye was one taken a few weeks before he passed. There he was holding his newly born granddaughter and I guarantee you he was the same man I saw looking over at me and Sean that happily forgotten day from our childhoods. No doubt about it. When I saw the face I was immediately transported back to that moment. All the smells and doubts and fears. I guess that's it. I am agnostic and loathe superstition and by no means wish to contribute to it, but this did happen to me. I live in NYC and work the graveyard shift. I get out about 4 to 5 a.m. every night. So, I'm on the subway and I jump on the one train and this guy is sitting alone with a fedora and a trench coat. We're the only two in the car. I look at him right before I step on, and we make eye contact. His eyes are bloodshot and crossed and I hesitate right before getting on and he notices clearly. I get on anyway and walk down to the opposite side of the car. I'm bigger than him, he's a small fat, pale white, middle-aged bald guy, but he is just staring me down and hasn't taken his hands out of his pockets. He has his eyes locked on me and it's making me uncomfortable so I just turn and start staring at him, thinking he might look away quickly. Instead, he stands up. I immediately stand up too and we are just standing at either end of the car looking at each other. As we're pulling up to the next stop, I walk up to the door like I'm getting off. The car stops and the doors open, still no one in sight, and I jump off the train. He jumps off too. I wait for the ding. The doors make before closing and jump back in right as they close. He doesn't make it. As the train starts to pull out this guy just stares me down through the glass. I waved goodbye with a big eating grin. I was in Flax, an art store in SF, getting supplies, and this guy was following me around the store. I decided it was time to split, and he followed me to the checkout line and my car. I was 21 at the time and there were no cell phones back then, amazingly, so I was on my own. So, this guy starts talking about the machines in his head and how the government is following him. Crazy stuff like that. But here's the thing, I come from a crazy family. I know crazy. He wasn't crazy. My best idea for the defense was to use all those FBI techniques I have gleaned from watching too many cops shows and be crazier than he was. I started stepping closer to him, and never broke eye contact. I raised my voice when I spoke and was excited when we had something in common. I said I wanted to get to know him better, and where did he live? I could visit him. He said some homeless shelter and the address, and I got excited and said I knew exactly where that was. I could visit him on Thursday. 
He ended up backing up throughout the conversation, and at one point asked, Why are you talking to me? I looked away, wistfully, and said, Not many people talk to me. You know. This is all a true story. I've never done it again, thank goodness, but he left scared. I went home safely. Victory for me. Ernest is important. Twelve year ago. If it makes any difference, I will preface this by saying that I'm female. That fact may or may not make the following creepier. I used to live next to an eye hospital. One day, walking home, I was stopped by an old man who had trouble seeing. He asked me to help him across the road to the hospital. I agreed, and he grabbed hold of my hand very tightly. At this point, I noticed his fingers were stained brown from tobacco, and covered in scabs, and his fingernails were very long and dirty. I started to think that my good deed for the day would be a bit regrettable. When we got to the other side of the road he still had my hand grasped so tightly I couldn't politely pull away. Do you want to see my eye, he said. One of his eyes was squeezed shut. With his free hand, he pulled the lids apart and I realized to my horror that he had no eyeball just an empty socket. I started babbling, still trying to be polite, about how that was very interesting, but I had to go. Then he uttered the immortal words, do you want to put your finger in there? He was pulling hard on my hand trying to force my fingers into his empty eye socket. At this point, I gave up on politeness and struggled my hand free, it was difficult, he was really strong, and just ran for it. I could hear him laughing as I ran off. Plan funeral. Twelve year ago. So many years ago, I worked the night shift at a 7 eleven in a neighborhood right next to a bad neighborhood. At about 2 in the morning, we had a security guard, but he didn't even carry a gun. From 2 until 5 you were on your own. After I was hired I found out this particular 7 eleven had been robbed a few times and when family members I knew found out I was working there they tried to convince me to quit. Well as I worked nights I slept during the day and one evening I woke up from this very intense dream where I was shot, it was so intense I woke up sweating with this feeling that I was punched in the chest. I decided to quit that day. Well about a week later I go in to collect my paycheck and a new guy is working the late shift. Seemed alright, I spoke to him for a moment, and I left. I found out that the next night he was shot in the chest while working and died in the hospital. Okay, I got contacts around the time I turned 21, and I had a real phobia of putting things in my eyes. If you live in the US, you know that they won't let you leave the ophthalmologist with your first pair of contacts unless you can put them in at least one time. It took me having to come back three days in a row before I could get it right. That's how disturbed I was about it, but I was determined to have contacts. Anyways, I was really careful about rubbing my eyes with them in, because I had this paranoid fear that I would grind them into my eyes. I know. I know. As I said, I had a real phobia. So, I go to take a bath, and I'm really careful about getting soap in my eyes. Finally, I wash my hair and close my eyes as I douse water on my head. I rub my eyes and open them, and, I realize I'm blind. I can see absolutely nothing. I was in a state of sheer terror. I got incredibly still, and all the possibilities were going through my head. How was I going to get out of the bathtub without help? Was this permanent? How was I going to live my life blind? Then the lights came back on. In the five seconds when I had closed my eyes, the power had gone off, and since the bathroom had no window, I'd been in pitch darkness. Smells like diabetes. Twelve year ago. During finals week at college, I left the library pretty close to midnight and decided to carry my laptop to my car which was a block and a half away down a side street. I was completely alone and my phone was dead, but it was pretty well lit so I figured I'd be okay. As I was walking, a pickup truck driving the opposite way slowed down and did a K-turn behind me, and started following me. 
I immediately stopped, let it pass, and stood by a lamp post until it made a turn, down the street where my car was. I went back to the library and asked public safety to walk me to my car. As we got closer, the truck that had been following me was idle in the space directly behind my car and sped off down the street as soon as he saw me and the cop. I almost didn't go back and get public safety because I felt I was being too paranoid. Note, never be too paranoid. Benjomon 1984. 12 year ago. So, I'm around 4 years old and my mom takes me with her for some grocery shopping. She lets me walk around but attempts to keep a close eye on me. Lo and behold, I decided to run off in search of some fruit roll-ups, those being my favorite candy at the time. I'm walking down an aisle and the seedy looking guy turns around and starts talking to me. Hey there son, where are you headed in such a hurry? Mind you I'm paraphrasing what he said, it's too far back to remember exactly. Anyways, he starts asking me questions. The first question is, what's your favorite candy? I of course let him know it's fruit roll-ups. So, he says, can you help me pick one out for my daughter? I say sure and he grabs my hand and walks me down the aisle and into another aisle. I remember this exactly because I commented on how there wasn't any candy in the aisle. Long story short, he is walking me around the store and my mom is freaking out. She runs to the help desk, or whatever the hell you call it, and tells them that her child is missing. The store goes on lockdown. The guy gets the hell out of there and I don't remember much after that. Now, I don't want to presume that this guy was a kidnapper, but now that I look back I the situation it seems kinda creepy. One day I got up in the middle of the night, I was living in a city in DC at the time, I was lying in bed and noticed under the closed door, a streak of light had shown underneath. I immediately figured a burglar, so I grabbed a belt figuring hey I may get stabbed or shot, but I'm not gonna pretend as if this shit isn't happening. Anyways I get out and open the door catching the silhouette of a man in the darkness wearing a hoodie and having organized nearly all my shit in a neat line on the floor and table, odd I know. I quickly alert him get out my fucking house man, I called the police the guy dug his hands in his pockets, imitating a weapon, then quickly and calmly replied hey it's okay, I'm here to protect you. Caught off guard I simply replied, alright dude while brandishing my belt. He then replies I am a grab ma kamikaze sack and leave. Remember, I was here to protect you he then left, prompting me to learn that I lived in a neighborhood where there had earlier been a drive-by shooting a few months past. Kitten Burrito 12 year ago. Okay, a couple of things you need to know first. When I was 2 years old my parents and I lived in a house that my grandparents owned. Although only 2, I apparently could speak quite well in full sentences. My parents' bedroom was connected to mine through the closet, meaning you could walk into their closet, go through a door in the back and end up in the back of my closet. My mom started having these terrible nightmares. In her dream, she would wake up surrounded by fire. She'd rush through the closet to my room, scoop me up and dive out the window. Suddenly it would flash forward, and she and my dad would be sitting in a waiting room at a hospital. A doctor would come in, looking somber, and say, I'm sorry, but... She'd wake up at that point, sweating profusely and her heart racing. One night, she woke up to me screaming. She ran into my room and pulled me into her arms, calming me down and asking me what was wrong. My response was, Mommy, Mommy, my room was on fire. I was on fire. Of course, this freaked her. I'm willing to admit that my having some sort of similar nightmare may have been caused by me overhearing a conversation about my mom's nightmares, but that's not the freaky part. Not too long after this, we moved out, though not because of the nightmares my mom was having. We lived in southern Illinois at the time, and my parents were having a tough time making enough money to support us living there, so we moved up to northern Illinois. My grandparents sold that house once we moved. 
About six months after we moved out my mom was talking to my grandma on the phone. My grandma started telling my mom about how the house we used to live in had caught on fire. No one was home at the time, but the bedroom that had been mine had been destroyed. The fire had started because of an electrical short in the closet I spoke of before. This story always gives me chills when I tell it. Dmitry Sokolov 12 year ago I used to go to the University of Arizona in Tucson. One night some friends and I decided to go to Agua Prieta, Mexico, which is across from Douglas, Arizona. Agua Prieta is a kind of town. I met some Mexican friends and a few girls we knew at this club. After the club was closed, most of our other friends left and I was standing outside talking to one of the girls from the club and a bunch of other drunk Mexicans started yelling at me calling me gringo, carbon, pendejo, the usual insults. I speak Spanish so I knew what they were saying. They started walking towards me throwing beer bottles and on the other side of the street, a few policemen with shotguns drawn started walking towards me as well. The situation did not look very good at all. Me against about 12 people plus who the fuck knows what the police were going to do. I turned around and ran as fast as I could towards the border with beer bottles whizzing past me and breaking near my feet. Luckily I got to the border without getting my ass kicked or hit by any bottles. By the time I got to the US border, the US border guards saw the people and police following me and told me I was lucky to get out of there alive. I never went back down there. A few months later, a Mexican-American friend of ours was killed down there. Lily Lily. Twelve year ago. When I was very young, about three or maybe four, I was at a BMX race meet with my dad and my brother. I thought I was a big girl then and insisted that my dad let me walk a couple of hundred meters down the hill to the snacks van to get ice cream. Since the whole walk and me standing to buy the ice cream was in sight of my dad, he said okay, gave me some coins, and sent me down the hill. I went down and stood in line, the lovely ladies helped me, and I got the ice cream I wanted. I was smiled at by a couple of people lined up behind me to make purchases. And I grinned back up the hill while I enjoyed my ice cream. I sat down under our little tarpaulin tent slash shade set up to eat the rest when boom. The snack van exploded into a huge fireball. The two ladies that worked there and two of the people who had stood in the line behind me died. One of the huge gas cylinders on the side of the van that powered the burners inside had sprung a leak and just went up. I dropped my ice cream and ran and hid under the tarpaulin at the back of our tent and was screaming for hours. My dad had to struggle to get me out and home. I don't remember too much of it. I do remember the fireball, and being able to feel the heat of it, and oddly, I always remembered the faces of the lady who gave me my ice cream and the people in line behind me. Thornoft Hanados 12 year ago Many years back I was driving along rather late at night on a road near the hospital I was interning, in a shady part of Detroit, back when the city was even more dangerous. There were only a few cars on the road at that time, and at that time I had been living there for only a few months so I did not know about most of the dangers that were present in that city, people buying old cop cars and pulling over people and robbing them, people jacking cars that were stopped at red lights, etc. Anyway, my damn car's tire suddenly gets wrecked, and I managed to pull to the side of the road. It was late, in one of the many bad parts of town, but I did not understand that at the time, I am not a native of the city, so I got out and get ready to change my tires, I was not a member of the AAA. I was working on the back tire that was shredded when suddenly another car pulled up and stopped right in front of my car. I assumed he was there to help me, stupid, so I got up to talk to him. The man in the other car got out, proceeded to walk over and crouch near my front tire with some tools, and started to take the tire off. I was rather confused at this, so I asked the man, hey, what are you doing? He stopped to turn to me, face completely serious, and said, you take the back tires and the radio, I'll take the front tires and the battery, fair it took me a moment to register that he was indeed stealing my tires, so I just blurred out without thinking, this is my car. 
The other guy stopped, stared at me for a few seconds, then picked up his tools, got in his car, and left. I finished changing the tires, and only a few minutes later did I realize how dangerous it was being alone in a car on a dark stretch of road in the bad part of town. That does not mean it was not funny in retrospect, though. Thanks for watching. Please comment, like, share and subscribe. The Internet Surfer on YouTube for more horror and scary stories.